top 25 open world games that will make you forget your own address. Episode 2. Now, drop that F in the chat, cuz... Aw, oh, shit. Here we go again. Rage 2. Imagine if Mad Max and Borderlands had a baby, and that baby was raised on energy drinks. That's basically Rage 2. The gunplay is amazing. Shotguns that blast enemies into gooey chunks, plus you get crazy superpowers and over-the-top vehicles. But the open world is kinda bland, and the story barely exists. If you just want to run around and cause mindless destruction for a few hours, that'll scratch this itch. No Man's Sky. Okay, this one started as a major flop, but they've been updating it like crazy, exploring an infinite universe filled with weird planets and alien creatures. Now that sounds epic. And they've added base building, space combat, all sorts of stuff. Problem is, it feels like a bit of a mile wide, but an inch deep. The planets start to blend together, and the grind never really stops. It's got potential, but I'm waiting for something that feels truly next gen. Prey. You wake up on a space station overrun by creepy shape-shifting aliens with no idea what's going on. Prepare for a mind-bending experience. Prey is all about exploration, solving environmental puzzles, and finding creative ways to survive, like turning yourself into a coffee mug to sneak past enemies. The atmosphere is chilling, and the story genuinely surprised me, but if you hate feeling lost and confused, and you prefer your actions straightforward, this ain't for you. Minecraft. Don't get me wrong, the idea is cool. A world made entirely of blocks where you can just let your imagination run wild. But what do you even do in this game? Just punch trees all day to gather wood? Then spend hours building the same blocky houses? Not exactly an adrenaline rush. I admire the creativity of hardcore fans, but I need a bit more structure and, well, actual gameplay. Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, this was a disaster at launch, but they've patched it up a lot, right? Visually, it's definitely stunning. All those neon lights and grimy streets. Atmospheric for sure. But the story felt kinda rushed, and the gameplay boils down to familiar shootouts and stealth missions. Plus, with Keanu Reeves in it, I was expecting way more mind-blowing stuff. It's got potential, but it needed like another year in the oven. Far Cry 6. Another day, another tropical island ruled by some crazy dictator. Yawn. At least this time you've got ridiculous makeshift weapons like a CD launcher. I guess it beats the same old guns. The bad guy, played by that guy from Breaking Bad, is a total ham, but fun to despise. Explosions? Check. Outposts to take over? Double check. If you love the Far Cry formula, this delivers, but honestly, can we get an evil dictator based on, like, the Arctic or something? Shake it up a bit. Sleeping Dogs. Ugh, can't these games just let you be the good guy for once? In this one, you're an undercover cop in Hong Kong, meaning you gotta cozy up to a bunch of gangsters and do their dirty work. So you spend half the game beating up thugs, carjacking innocent drivers, and generally acting like a jerk. Then the other half is all ordering takeout, singing karaoke, and getting messages? What kind of undercover operation is that? I guess the fighting is kinda satisfying, but the story is a mess. Who am I supposed to root for here? Ghost of Tsushima. All right, I admit this one looks gorgeous. Those samurai duels and fields of swaying flowers, total cinematic moments. And I kind of dig the whole honor versus stealth thing. Should you be a noble warrior or a sneaky assassin? But sometimes it feels like the game is just a checklist of beautiful places to visit and Mongo camps to clear out. The story gets pretty predictable too. Still, if you want to feel like a total badass samurai, it's worth a shot. Subnautica. Below Zero. Okay, whoever designed this game is a total sadist. Sure, the underwater world is kinda pretty, but it's also full of terrifying leviathans with way too many teeth. I spent most of the time cowering in my little escape pod, not exploring cool alien ruins. Plus, they force you to constantly manage your hunger, thirst, and body temperature? Talk about micromanagement hell. At least the first Subnautica let you build cool bases. This one is all about shivering and hiding from sea monsters. 
Mad Max. If you ever wanted to live out those post-apocalyptic car chase fantasies, well, here's your game. Driving and customizing your wasteland war machine is pure chaotic fun. Smashing into enemies' convoys, harpooning baddies, it's mindless carnage at its finest. But the on-foot sections are pretty repetitive, and the story is your typical revenge against the evil warlord thing. Still, for pure vehicular mayhem, it delivers. Yakuza 0. This series is absolutely bonkers, and I love it. One minute you're beating up thugs in the neon-drenched streets of Tokyo, the next you're managing a cabaret club or belting out karaoke. The combat is super satisfying, the main storyline is surprisingly serious, and the side quests are completely off the wall. If you've never experienced the glorious insanity of Yakuza, this is the perfect place to start. The Saboteur. Ever wish Grand Theft Auto was set in Nazi-occupied Paris? Well, this is it. Climbing rooftops, blowing up Nazi installations, and sparking a French rebellion all while playing a wisecracking Irishman. Definitely a unique premise. It gets a bit repetitive towards the end, and the visuals are pretty dated now, but if you dig stealth action with a side of World War II history, it's worth checking out. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Okay, okay, everyone raves about this one and I can see why. It's like they let you loose in this enormous playground and said, go nuts! Climb mountains, tame horses, experiment with the crazy physics. The possibilities seem endless, but honestly, I got so lost and overwhelmed, it feels like work sometimes, not play. I wouldn't mind a few more hints on where to go next, or at least a bigger stamina wheel. Deep Rock Galactic, Dwarves in Space! What's not to love? This one's all about teamwork. You and your buddies blast through procedurally generated caves, mining precious minerals, and fighting off hordes of vicious bugs. The mix of classes is great, and the whole experience just feels fun. Sure, it can get repetitive if you play solo, but grab a few pals and you'll be shouting rock and stone for hours. Red Dead Redemption 2. Talk about slow and immersive. This game is all about the details. Brushing your horse, cleaning your guns, heck, even brewing coffee at camp. The story of Arthur Morgan and his outlaw gang is genuinely moving, and the world itself is breathtaking. But the pacing can feel like molasses, and sometimes you just want to ride around shooting stuff without another 20-minute cutscene. Elden Ring. Prepare to suffer, and I mean really suffer. This game is all about brutal difficulty and cryptic storytelling. Expect to die over and over and over again, even against basic enemies. But that feeling of finally taking down a massive, terrifying boss after dozens of attempts? Pure satisfaction. The world is dark and beautiful, and unraveling its mysteries is a major reward, if you're patient enough. If you like your games with a side of masochism, this is for you. Watch Dogs 2. All right, I'll admit, hacking stuff is way more fun than it should be. Messing with traffic lights, stealing people's bank info, even remotely controlling cars. It makes you feel like a total tech genius. But those parkour missions? My thumbs are about to fall off from all the button mashing. And the whole young hip hacker vibe gets old fast. I'm here to play a game, not watch a bunch of wannabe revolutionaries take cringy selfies. Saints Row 4. This game went completely off the rails, and honestly, I'm kind of here for it. Aliens, superpowers, becoming the president of the United States, it's pure insanity. If you're tired of serious games, this is the antidote. The humor's dumb as a rock, but sometimes that's exactly what I want. Plus, flying around and blasting stuff with superpowers? Ridiculously satisfying. Outer Wilds. This one's all about exploring space, right? Wrong! You're stuck on this dinky planet, and the whole solar system keeps exploding every 20 minutes. Guess it's kinda cool seeing planets whiz by, but seriously, who has the time for that when you gotta start all over again every time the sun goes supernova? It's like the worst video game time loop ever. Don't get me wrong, the mystery at the heart of it is intriguing, but the constant repetition made me wanna chuck my controller out the window. Valheim. Vikings and survival crafting? Sign me up! Or so I thought. This one is brutally hard and not in a fun way. Starvation, freezing to death, giant trolls smashing your pathetic little hut makes me want to scream. I get the appeal of the building and exploration, but the punishment is way too severe. Maybe if I had a group of friends to suffer with, it'd be more tolerable. Elite Dangerous. 
Spaceships? Neat! Exploring the galaxy? Awesome! Actually flying the darn spaceship? Impossible! This is more of a flight simulator than a game. I spent hours just trying to figure out how to take off without crashing into the space station. And once you're finally in space, it's mostly just empty space. Sure, there's stuff to do, but it takes forever to get anywhere. If you enjoy tedium disguised as realism, this is the space sim for you. East Shade. Okay, hear me out. A game where you play as a painter wandering a gorgeous island and capturing landscapes on canvas. No guns, no monsters, just pure chill vibes. You talk to quirky characters, solve light puzzles, and uncover the island's secrets at your own pace. It's the absolute opposite of the usual action-packed stuff I play, but sometimes you just need to slow down and appreciate some digital beauty, you know? Fallout New Vegas. Now this is how you do a post-apocalyptic RPG. Forget endless crafting and settlement building, New Vegas focuses on a twisty story with memorable characters and choices that actually matter. Do you side with the ruthless Legion, the shifty Mr. House, or the struggling New California Republic? The gunplay is clunky as heck and it's definitely showing its age visually, but the sheer depth of this world is what keeps me coming back. Dying Light 2. Stay human. Parkour plus zombies plus an open world grappling hook equals recipe for a good time, right? Well, mostly. Leaping across rooftops and outrunning hordes of the undead feels fantastic, especially at night when the real nasty ones come out. The story's a bit of a mess, though, and the choices you make don't seem to impact things as much as they promise. Still, if you loved the first Dying Light, you'll probably dig this one, too. The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Ugh, another massive world I'm supposed to sink hundreds of hours into. No thanks. Sure, there are dragons and all that fantasy stuff, but mainly it seems like you spend your time picking herbs and crafting swords, then lugging it all back to town to sell. Who has the patience for that? The combat feels like I'm whacking enemies with a wet noodle. I get that people love this kind of freedom, but I need a bit more purpose. All right, that's it for this video. Drop what you want me to feature in the next episode. Until then, I'm gonna head back to the real world where NPCs are dumb, but the drama is too real.